Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of uh, Unique Items. Today we're going to be looking at the Gavel of Pain Martel de Fur. Um, the Gavel of Pain Martel de Fur is an indestructible item, which means that it cannot be ethereal, so this item does not exist. Don't pay attention to that item. <laughs> the Gavel of Pain uh, Martel de Fur is uh, 170 to 287 damage. It is 169 strength requirement, which is relatively high for its level requirement of only level 45. The damage is very nice, but the level requirement and the uh, the strength requirement are a little odd in comparison to um, its effectiveness. Um, it could be very useful to a barbarian or, um, well, pretty much just a barbarian. <laughs> uh, the slow nature of this weapon would make it very painful to use on something like a, uh, a shapeshifter druid. Uh, there's definitely some interesting choices with this item. We'll, we'll go over that as we continue. Um, as you can see, it is indestructible. It does have a 5% chance to cast level 1 Amplify Damage on Striking. Now, um, Amplify Damage is a reduction in the monster's physical resistance of 100%. And uh, at level 1, it still provides 100% reduction. But it only has a radius of 2 yards, and it only lasts for 8 seconds. So the Amplify Damage on here might not be particularly useful, especially since it only has a 5% chance to cast and it only lasts for 8 seconds. You might not get it to proc as often as you would like. Uh, we also have a 5% chance to cast level 1 Iron Maiden, which complicate things, because unfortunately that means that the Amplify Damage, when it does proc, could potentially be overwritten by Iron Maiden. Now, what is Iron Maiden? Iron Maiden is the ability to, uh, when you're hit, reflect damage back to the target. Um, now, at level 1, which is what this provides, I Amplify Damage is 200% returned in a duration of 12 seconds. Uh, sorry, Iron Maiden is 200% is returned in 12 seconds. And, uh, and as you can see, just relatively low procs, low level procs, low radius, low everything. Um, they're not particularly the greatest procs of the world, but... If you need amp damage, if you need some way to kill physical immunes, this could be an interesting choice. Um, it also has 160% enhanced damage on it, uh, which does vary a little bit uh, from 130 to 160%. And um, with a weapon like this that hits really hard, that 30% can be a big deal. Uh, we also have a uh, adds 12 to 30 damage, which is uh, just a flat addition. And then we also have the uh, attacker takes damage of 26, which is a lot of attacker takes damage of, and will actually stack with the Iron Maiden, which isn't, like, too terrible. And at level 45, you might see that Iron Maiden and the attacker takes damage of 26 do a decent amount of damage to targets. But the main issue is that um, most monsters around level 45... Um, are going to have too much HP for that to be really effective. Uh, the Amplify Damage uh, charges could be useful, but there's only three of them. I don't know why they decided to do only three charges. But they are level 8 Amplify Damage charges, which is a heck of a lot better than the level uh, 1 Amplify Damage charges uh, on this particular item. And uh, level 8 is going to be a 6.6 .6 yard radius, so you're going to be able to hit a lot more targets with it. And it does have a 29 second Duration, um, so you will get a little bit more use out of those three charges. Now, I don't know exactly how much those charges are to repair, so uh, so we're going to go ahead and utilize them really quickly, and then we're going to go uh, repair it and see how much they cost per charge. I think that's a, a good plan. All right, so there we go. Now we've used up our three charges. And, uh, and to repair it, you could repair it one of a couple ways. Um, you could use the Haradric Cube recipe to repair it, uh, which requires a, a chip gem. And then you could also just repair it at the uh, the vendor here. So I have uh, 27,706. Uh, so if we divide that out uh, by... If we divide that out by... Uh, by charges, so twenty-seven thousand. Let's just let's just round it to twenty-eight thousand. I don't even care. Twenty-eight thousand uh, divided by three. So you're looking at like close to nine thousand gold per charge. That's pretty expensive, to be honest, uh, for just amplify damage. Although it could be handy to uh, take out some physical immune monsters. Thirty seconds is a pretty long time. Um, but the complication here is that your Amplify Damage Level 1 on here and the Amplify Damage Level, or the Iron Maiden Level 1, can both overwrite your higher level Amplify Damage and ruin the effect. 
It almost seems like if you just wanted the Amplify Damage charges, you could keep the Martel de Fur on your other hand and use it to cast. But then again, you'd have to have 169 Strength to be able to do that. Uh, the weapon also has 50% Enhanced Damage to Undead, of course, which is uh, off-weapon ED, and off-weapon ED uh, does not work as well as on-weapon ED, so do keep that in mind. Um, off-weapon ED is, um, is a completely different formula, and uh, if you'd like to, uh, a more thorough explanation of what off-weapon ED is, I do have a video that I just released on Might. And uh, one of the things I did with the Might video was I went over exactly what plus damage calculations and off-weapon ED is. Um, specifically because, obviously, the Might aura is all revolving around plus off-weapon ED. So, uh, so I wanted to make sure that people got a good idea of what off-weapon ED actually was as they looked at the Might aura you know, in the future. Uh, now, the Martel Dafer um, is a mid-tier item. It's a nightmare level item or an exceptional level item, uh, whichever term you like to use. And, uh, and being level 45, I do feel like it has a decent place. But being a very slow weapon, it tends to be just not really used by a lot of characters. Uh, when I mean really slow, I mean, like, really slow. This weapon is very, very, very slow. Um, and when you're in the middle of combat and you're trying to utilize this weapon, it can be a pretty big deal. Um, there are some interesting uses that you can have with this particular weapon, like, for instance, a Whirlwind. Whirlwind doesn't really care too much about your weapon speed, uh, specifically because it gives you free hits. Um, there is a whole thing about Whirlwind uh, that it actually will give you free hits at the beginning of a chain, which is usually why people will do short Whirlwind Bursts instead of long Whirlwind Bursts, uh, because they get these free hits. And very slow weapons actually tend to get more damage um, for short Whirlwind Bursts. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Dance of Death is something like this. It's one, two, three, one, two, three... And you don't really want to uh, to make very big swathing movements because you're basically relying on the free hits that Whirlwind is giving you. Um, if you make big swathing movements, then you have to rely on the attack speed of your weapon, and uh, and that's not necessarily what you're what you're looking for. Um, I probably wouldn't use this on a uh, of a druid just simply because of how slow it is. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what characters could get very good use out of this. I mean, maybe a Charge Paladin could have some fun with this, uh, just simply because it um, has amplified damage on it. It's relatively nice damage. It looks pretty cool. It has a very a very interesting-looking graphic. kind of reminds me of, like, a Carnival Hammer. Um, now, of course, you can upgrade this weapon uh, one tier uh, to the Thunder Maul. Now, the downside of upgrading this to the Thunder Maul is that the strength requirement is going to go through the roof. You think the 169 strength requirement on this thing is bad right now? Well, trust me, uh, it's not compared to uh, to what it's going to go to. Uh, so let me move myself out of the way, and we'll take a look at what this weapon looks like when it's upgraded to its elite tier. So to upgrade this, you are going to need a Paul, a Lum, and a Perfect Emerald. And uh, it is going to go from 170 to 287, 169 strength requirement, level 45 to 97 to 498. Notice the bottom end drops out on the damage uh, because that's the Thunderball. 253 strength requirement, which is massive. Uh, not a lot of characters have 253 strength just lying around. Uh, and level 72 requirement. Uh, probably not the best item to upgrade. I feel like the Gavel of Pain is more so an item which should generally stay at level 45. Um, mainly because it doesn't really have enough enhanced damage to make it viable to upgrade. Um, you can't find it in an ethereal form because it is indestructible. Um, this is a, uh, a thing about indestructible items is they do not spawn ethereal. And um, the Amplified Damage just isn't really that great on this item. At level 1, it doesn't really last very long. And, uh, and with a very, very tiny radius, it, um, it tends to not be as useful. Um, but let's look and see where you could potentially find one if you were looking to find a Gavel of Pain. Uh, so let's go over to Silo's Pen. Silo's Pen is where I like to look at uh, drop chances. If you've uh, been with me for a while, you know that uh, Silo's Pen is pretty good on uh, looking up individual drop chances for items. And, uh, brink, brink, brink. All right, so uh, we're going to go uh, to level 45. So 
let's assume that we're looking for this around level 45. So let's say we have about 100% magic find, which seems about fair. Uh, we have looking, we are looking for a unique item. Oh no. We're looking for a unique item, um, and we are looking for the Gavel of Pain. Got a cool name, though, doesn't it? The Gavel of Pain. Like, what weapon are you using? Oh, I'm using the, the, the Ginthu's Rift. Well, what, what are you using? Oh, I'm using the Gavel of Pain. The pain! What does it do? It's painful, that's right. Pain. Uh, it's the, it's the Gavel of Pain. I hate when they do that. Just because the is in the beginning of the word doesn't mean you need to categorize it by T-H-E. <laughs> he's going to hide behind my head, isn't he? Uh, so we're going to look at bosses first. Uh, let's take a look and see what uh, the drop chance is for bosses. And, uh, you know, let me bring this uh, up a little bit bigger, shall I? And uh, bring that way you guys can see it a little bit better. Yeah, that's better. All right, so we're going to sort by probability here, and we're going to look and see what our best chance of finding this item is. We're going to ignore the quest flags because those are quest-only kills, which means that that's only the first time you kill the boss and not the subsequent times. Um, and Dariel is the only boss that has the same drop chance for both quest and non-quest kill, um, so, so we can take her quest kill. But it does look like Nightmare Bale is the best possible boss chance at 1 in 1,423, and Hell and Dariel at 1 in 5,015. Uh, both not bad chances. Um, Hell Mephisto also 1 in 1,604. Now the problem with all these is that they're too high level. By the time you reach um, Andariel in Hell difficulty, you should be around like level 60, maybe even level 70, depending on how you've played your character. And, um, and just in general, um, that's way too high level for the Capital of Pain. Uh, Bale in Nightmare, similarly, by the time you kill Bale, you're usually around like 50, 55, 60, um, and, uh, and that's not really a good spot either. So let's look a little bit further, shall we? Uh, we do have Nightmare Diablo, which could be around the right level, maybe. I mean, usually when I start Nightmare Difficulty, if I'm doing everything correctly, if I'm leveling up right, if I'm not skipping anything or rushing, I'm usually around level 40, 45 by the time I hit Normal, or sorry, Nightmare uh, and Ariel. And, um... I'm not seeing a lot of good choices here for specifically farming this to actually try and utilize it. I mean, Nightmare Mephisto is a little bit past when you start Nightmare, obviously. That's 1 in, one, one in 5,610. Um, that's the quest kill. The, uh, the non-quest kill is a lot less at 1 in 8,482. Uh, let's take a look at um, only Nightmare difficulty real quick. Just to get an idea of who maybe you could fight for this particular item. Uh, let's take a look at Super Uniques. Pretty terrible chances across the board for Super Uniques. So it does look like this item may suffer from one of the common uh, maladies of a lot of items. And it might be the reason why you don't see a lot of people using this particular weapon. Um, and you might be asking me what I'm talking about. Well, what I'm talking about is that it's a level 45 weapon. It doesn't tend to drop around level 45. And I've noticed this on quite a few occasions that um, certain items, for some reason or another, are more heavily linked to hell difficulty, despite the fact that they would be better used in the beginning of Nightmare. Um, I mean, if you take a look at a chart of where you should technically be um, at any given point, um, you would, you know, not be level 45 in hell difficulty. Um, I actually have such a chart, believe it or not, and uh, let me bring it up on camera here real quick. So here is my uh, my generalized chart. Now, of course, this is overly, overly simplified. There are, of course, different areas which are higher level and different areas that are lower level in certain zones. But for the most part, um, if you are leveling properly, if you're not skipping around and, and you know, having somebody power level you, um, you should generally be at these levels when you reach these particular goalposts. As you can see, a level 45 character would be basically in about Act 2 uh, Nightmare Difficulty if they were following the, the kind of the correct procedure. As I said earlier in the video, you're usually around level 45 by the time you kill Andariel in Nightmare Difficulty. So, um, under that assumption, 
let's go back to the um, the silos pen. Uh, we're going to very quickly look and see um, what potentially we could farm in Nightmare Act 2 difficulty. Um, so we're going to go to Nightmare, we're going to look at Super Uniques, and we're going to see what monsters are in Act 2 that could potentially drop this item. Now the chances of these monsters is terrible. 1 in 11,000, 1 in 15,000. I mean, those are just god-awful chances. Um, Act 2 difficulty. Um... Looking at nothing. Alright, let's go to bosses. And we're looking at nothing. So the so the answer to the question is, is you cannot get this on level. Um, not, not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, but if we were actually just trying to find the item and we're not worried about actually finding it on level, um, do keep in mind that we are looking at... Um, your best probable chance is um, Hell and Doriel, um, or Mephisto in Hell difficulty. Those are your two best chances. Uh, we also have Diablo in Hell can drop it, uh, but of course all of these are going to be after, far after your character actually gets a chance to uh, to find any of these monsters. And this is especially um, potent in ladder because if you wanted to get your hands on this item at any particular point, um, the um, the item obviously isn't going to help you out very much when you find it after you're, you know, like level 60 or 70 or 80 and you're moved on to better, bigger and better items. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my video, um, even when it is a painful one like this about the gavel of pain. And, uh, and as always, keep watching.